Texas kicked off its season Saturday against the Louisiana Tech mighty fighting Terry Bradshaws, and it was not pretty for La Tech. Texas runs a muck in this game, 45 to 14. Sam Ellinger comes out. By the way, uh, whoever is trying to push that nickname of Trill Sammy, please, for the love of God, stop. That is the worst nickname I've ever heard. At least Kenny Trill made a, or Kenny Thrill, Kenny Trill, whatever, made a little bit of sense in his brief flicker at Texas A&M. Trill Sammy does not work. I digress. Ellinger goes 28 of 38 for 276, 7.3 in average, four touchdowns, no picks, sacked only once. That's not bad. That is really not bad. He also adds another eight carries for 34 yards, 4.3 a carry, only a long of nine. But, you know, I, I saw improvement as a passer, I thought, from Ellinger. There's no, there's no doubt the kid has strength and power. He's kind of a poor man's Tim Tebow, but with a better arm, if that makes sense. As a runner, he's not, they don't lean on him as heavily as a runner as some of these other uh, mobile quarterbacks before him. I saw some Texas fan a while back trying to compare him to Lamar Jackson. Bro, you wish. His numbers are like a quarter of Lamar Jackson's numbers. But I think Tebow with an actual functioning arm is a decent comp in this case. Uh, guy's got edge. He's got moxie. He's got a very powerful lower body, which is great for trucking defenders. Uh, and he's improving as a passer. Uh, while 28 of 38, you know, that's a pretty that's a pretty good day. But 276, that's not going to blow you away. Four touchdowns is great. No picks. I, I looked through. I didn't catch the full game, but I did look through the highlights after the fact to try and make sure I didn't miss anything significant early on. Texas ran away with this game early, and it basically boiled down to a couple late touchdowns, finally, by Louisiana Tech. And their quarterback, who ended up throwing 51 passes to get 331 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, only sacked once. That surprised me. That really surprised me because I assumed the Texas defensive front was going to be one of their best strengths, and I don't think Louisiana Tech has that great of an offensive line, so that, that was surprising. Uh, elsewhere for the Texas Longhorns, you had Ingram going 11 of carries, 78 yards, 7.1 a pop. That is nice. A touchdown, only a long of 19, nothing amazing. Uh, comparatively speaking, OU, I know it's not the same defenses, but it's Houston compared to La Tech. So it's not like any of us have a great head-to-head -head matchup without doing some research on that. But OU had, I think, what was it, like 14 or 19 plays of 10-plus yards in the game? It was the most ever in a game from OU, which is amazing because you think of the last few years with them. But I digress. I'm not going to make this about OU again. Sorry. Um, Johnson also... Rushing the ball had seven for twenty six, so they get the backup quarterback uh, a little bit of a little bit of burn in that regard. Let's see here. Receiving, you had Eagles go three for fifty nine, two touchdowns. I don't know much about him, but that was a nice that was a nice showing for sure. Johnson adds in another four for fifty nine. Very balanced receiving days from Texas. You know, I was talking about how OU didn't have. Anybody, oh damn, I tied it back to OU. Whatever, it's the two leaders in the conference, or the two favorites in the conference. Uh, I was talking about how they had very equal distribution of receptions as well. Other than Duvernay getting nine catches, everyone else was no higher than four. A lot of threes, a lot of twos. So pretty even distribution from both of them. Uh, Dicker the kicker goes one of two. Again, I forgot to mention this earlier. OU's kicker missed both his field goals from 49 and 36. But, knock through every extra point, oh, you might be missing Cybert. Texas, though, still has Dicker the kicker, and that still means there could be shenanigans come Red River Rivalry Week. So, all in all, Texas, not bad. Let me, let me look at some of the Bulldog stats here as well. Uh, do, 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 I already mentioned Smith going 34 of 51 for 331. Two touchdowns, one pick, one sack. Running the ball. Woo! Texas's run defense looked like it was nice and healthy. Dancy goes 25 carry or 25 yards on seven carries. Henderson 18 yards on five. <laughs> nobody, nobody did very well. Nope. The best was somebody named Marcus that got one carry for seven yards, and therefore he had the best yards per carry. Uh, the passing game for La Tech. One receiver Harris here getting six for 58. 
You also have, I'm going to go to the standouts who got the touchdowns in this case. Herbert. I wanted to say Herbert, but the highlights guy kept saying Herbert. Herbert goes 5 for 50 with a touchdown. Very nice touchdown in the back of the end zone. One of those garbage ones. And Stanley also got a pretty nice touchdown as well. 4 for 48 for him. So, uh, Law Tech, the mighty fighting Terry Bradshaws. I know they're the Bulldogs, but I'm just going to call them the Terry Bradshaws because that's kind of their one guy that they can really tout as their own. And he had that speech in the offseason previewing the Texas game, and he was running his mouth like crazy, specifically taking pot shots at Sam Ellinger. So Texas didn't really forget that. And even if they did, La Tech didn't have the talent to play on this field with Texas. So uh, my general impression is Texas, as far as being back, it's too early to say. You can't put one 10-win season and one good bowl victory down and say, oh, we're back. It takes more than that. To me, if you're back... It's you build on a 10-win season with another 10-win season or you're in the playoff or something like that. You can't just, you can't in the regular season with nine wins get a 10th win by means of a bowl game, even though you knocked off a good Georgia team and then say, that's it, we're back. Like it's, that's, you ended the year well. You also lost four games. (laughs) You lost to West Virginia, You lost to Oklahoma State. You beat Oklahoma initially, but lost to them when it really counted in the Big 12 championship. And you lost to Maryland for the second year in a row. I have a hard time saying back because of a 10-4 and record just because you beat one really good team at the end of the year. If Texas wins the Big 12 championship this year, and, you know, if they somehow get, even if they don't get in the playoff, if they have another tough bowl matchup and win again, then... I will say, okay, they're back. It's been a minute, but they're back. It's good for the Big 12 if OU and Texas are good, so more power to them. But at the same time, man, uh, I feel like they're so eager to be back and for it to already be here that they're a little premature in declaring this because how many times over the last few years have we heard Texas is back? You know, beating USC at USC, I think they did. I know they beat them in one of the two. I can't remember if it was at USC they won or... I digress. Regardless, we'll see how back they are. Good start for the Longhorns, though. Pretty much a dominating win. Much better defensive performance out of them, I felt, than what we saw out of OU. And there's a reason they and OU are pretty much neck and neck in terms of the favorites to win the conference this year.